You know, if you're ever going to win a war, you had better go in with all the right weapons. For the believer, two of the most powerful yet most underused weapons of defeat that we have are fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer are not mere rituals. They are potent weapons in the arsenal of the faithful, forging a direct pathway to the heart of God and unleashing supernatural breakthroughs in our lives. Welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I am your host, Bishop A. Reginald Littman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church. This is part four of our series from the Book of Esther entitled, For Such a Time as This. And today we are embarking on a journey into the sacred realms of fasting and prayer, two profound spiritual disciplines that have ignited the flames of transformation in the lives of countless believers across the annals of history. This week's lesson is simply called The Power of Fasting and Prayer. I'm Bishop Littman, and you're watching the Midweek Refill. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. You can even leave your question about the scriptures or anything that comes to mind, and we'll try to respond to you with a biblical answer. Well, this is part four of our series on the book of Esther entitled For Such a Time as This. And we're looking this week at the power of fasting and prayer. You know, family, seeking God's intervention through fasting and through prayer is most definitely a tool and an arsenal that we all need to use. You see, it's in those moments of uncertainty or those moments of jubilation, fasting and prayer cease to be just mere routines, but they can literally transform into fervent quests for God's divine intervention. Fasting and prayer pave the path for us to seek God's guidance, provision, and His intervention in our everyday lives. And these are not antiquated rituals, but vibrant spiritual tools yielding profound results. Through fasting, we showcase our reliance on the divine, relinquishing earthly needs to wholly focus on Him. It's a potent expression of humility and devotion, fostering a deeper communication with God Almighty. Let's pause for just a moment for a personal introspection. And I want to ask you a question that you will also find in this week's free PDF handout, which is attached in the description box below. The link is down below. The question I want to ask you this week is, as you look back over your life, how has fasting and prayer been a part of how God has moved in you, through you, for you, and even around you as you have journeyed, trusting him through the power of fasting and prayer? Have they illuminated moments of clarity, ushered in breakthroughs, or even stirred up a renewal within your soul? Well, friends, I want to tell you, if you've not experienced either of those through fasting and prayer, it is very possible that God can bless you with a greater sense of renewal through fasting and prayer. Now, friends, in the book of Esther, we find a profound and poignant example of the power of prayer and fasting at work in the story of Esther. When faced with impending doom, Queen Esther rallied her people to fast and to pray, igniting a collective plea for God's intervention. And you'll see in this narrative that it resonates through the ages. It literally underscores the transformative power of seeking God through fasting 
and prayer. Let's take a look, first of all, at Esther chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, to see God at work as we begin our journey for this week's session into part four of the story of Esther. Esther chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, read like this. Then Esther sent this message to Mordecai. Go and gather together all the Jews of Shushan and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day, and I and my maids will do the same. And then, though it is strictly forbidden, I will go in to see the king, and if I perish, I perish. In this powerful passage of scripture, we witness the resolve of Queen Esther as she, in her wisdom, proclaims her intent to embark on a fast, joined by her loyal maids and her people for a span of three whole days. You know, now such a solemn commitment is seen here, and it really underscores the gravity of the moment and the urgency of the hour. It teaches us that in times of difficulty, in times of decision, and in times that are detrimental, we need to go before the Lord in fasting and in prayer. And through this act of fasting, Esther and her companions symbolize their profound dependence on the Almighty God, expressing a fervent desire for His divine intervention in the tumultuous currents of their lives at the time. It's a testament to the unwavering faith and the underlying trust and providence that we need to have in the Most High God. Now, let's look at what the scriptures teach us in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 16 through 18. And it reads like this. And now about fasting. When you fast, declining your food for a spiritual purpose, don't do it publicly as the hypocrites do, who try to look wan and disheveled, so people will feel sorry for them. Truly, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, put on festive clothing so that no one will suspect you are hungry, except your father who knows every secret, and he will reward you. I love how this passage reads, because here Jesus is teaching us the necessity of fasting and prayer. And Jesus is underscored here in Matthew by showing us the inner transformation that fasting and prayer can bring about. Whether communal, meaning with other people, or personal, fasting and prayer can unveil the multifaceted aspects of seeking divine intervention and nurturing spiritual growth. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever experienced God's touch through fasting and prayer? Reflect on those moments. How have they sculpted your faith and deepened your reliance on the Almighty God? I'd love to read your comment. So, family, as we look at the community response and God's deliverance in the aftermath of Esther's call, we witness the glorious tapestry of a communal fasting and prayer, leading to the deliverance of a people who was on the brink of annihilation. Some communal responses echo through time. They testify literally to the potency of spiritual discipline and God's unwavering sovereignty. In fact, let's take a look now at Esther chapter 9, verse number 
31. It reads like this. From verse 29. Meanwhile, Queen Esther, daughter of Abihel, and later adopted by Mordecai the Jew, had written a letter throwing her full support behind Mordecai's letter, inaugurating his annual feast of Purim. In addition, letters were sent to all the Jews throughout the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, with messages of goodwill and encouragement to confirm these two days annually as the Feast of Purim, decreed by both Mordecai, the Jew, and by Queen Esther. Indeed, the Jews themselves had decided upon this tradition as a remembrance of the time of their national fasting and prayer. In Esther 9 and 31, we are shown the remarkable account of the establishment of a tradition observing the days of Purim. These sacred days serve as a beacon of remembrance and jubilation, commemorating the miraculous deliverance bestowed upon them by the hand of God. The communal celebration, my friends, stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of communal fasting and prayer. It unites the hearts of the community in joyous acknowledgement of God's unwavering faithfulness and his mighty acts of deliverance. And truly, it is a testament to the power of collective faith and the boundless grace of our loving God. Let's look at the power of prayer from the perspective of James chapter number 5 and verse number 16. It reads like this. Admit your faults one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and wonderful results. Now, in these enlightening words of James 5 and 16, we are reminded of the profound efficacy of fervent and righteous prayers, especially when they're offered by those who walk in righteousness. It's really a powerful testimony, family, of the spiritual vitality that permeates the communal bonds within the body of believers. In other words, when we come together, as we see Esther bring the kingdom together regarding prayer and fasting, that is when we will see a communal blessing, meaning a blessing for the entire nation, for the community that may be our family, it may be our church family, it may be those that we're praying for. God wants to bless communities, and it's when we bring communities together through prayer and fasting, that we learn of the power of God's ability to bless that community. So, as we explore the sacred scriptures of Esther and James, we find a beautiful intertwining of divine hearts. Esther 9 and 31 reveals the enduring legacy of communal fasting and prayer. It gives birth to sacred tradition that echoes through the corridors of time and as a constant reminder of God's unwavering deliverance and God's forever faithfulness. So this communal response not only strengthens the bonds within the community, but it also serves as a resounding testimony to the transformative ability that united prayer and fasting can bring. Similarly, we also saw that in James 5 and 16, we saw a radiant light reminding us of how communal intercession, that is praying together, serving together, loving God together, and having mutual support and respect for each other as a body of believers, affirming the profound impact of united spiritual 
discipline can help us to advance as the body of Christ. A church does not move forward on its feet. A church moves forward on its knees. Let's talk about embracing fasting and prayer in your own spiritual journey, because it is a personal matter as much as it is a communal matter. So as we draw the curtain closed on this part of our series, there's something I want us to do. I want us to ponder on the transformative potential that fasting and prayer can have on our lives. And let's sort of weave them into a fabric, if you will, of our own spiritual tapestry and embrace them as sacred practices in our journey with God in heaven. It must be something that you desire to do. Fasting and prayer can be a powerful resource in your life. So you want to establish routines that honor these disciplines. It's important to establish routines as well as seeking accountability and support from other fellow believers and remain open to the gentle whispers of the Holy Spirit. And as you make your way through this sacred path called life, when you trust God and practice the spiritual discipline of fasting and prayer, you will discover, friends, that God can move in your way in ways you never even thought possible. So by integrating fasting and prayer into your own spiritual life, you can then position yourself for a divine metamorphosis, a change, a profound realignment with the will of the Almighty God. Fasting and prayer is one of the most sacred practices, and it serves as a lantern that guides us through the darkest of nights. Fasting and prayer can illuminate the path to communion with God. Fasting and prayer can bring about spiritual breakthroughs in your life that you may not even be aware that you desperately need. Well, listen, I hope that you've gotten a lot out of this part of our series. This is just part four of our series on Esther. I want to make sure that you go down into the description box below. There is a link there where you can acquire the free PDF for each and every session as we're teaching through the book of Ruth. I hope and pray that you got something out of this study. And I want to challenge you to make sure that you read through the free PDF handout because it is loaded with all sorts of questions and reflections and other things that I don't have time to get fully into in our time of teaching. But I want you to go get it, but not just get it, go share it. Share, share, share alike with somebody you love or maybe somebody you have a struggle with and allow them to discover, along with you, the power of prayer and fasting. Well, I'm Bishop Littman, and I want to thank you so much for watching. And until next time, you go with God.